Real Madrid has hired some of football's best managers and sent them packing not long after. So from multiple insiders' points of view, what does it take to manage Los Blancos and to do so successfully? Before we begin, the article aspects of this video are based on first appeared on The Athletic and was written by Adam Crafton and Dominic Fifield. Head to www.theathletic.com slash TV to get started with a 7-day free trial and 40% off of your annual subscription. Hey there, I'm Adrian, and I hope you're faring well without football. Tough times, man. Really tough times, but we gotta work through it. It's all we can do, right? And we can do so by seeing just what it's like to be at the helm of one of the most demanding clubs in the world, Real Madrid. The first thing to consider, of course, is the moving of the goalposts, of what's considered a successful campaign versus what failure constitutes. As Crafton and Fifield write, for a head coach, it can chew you up and spit you out in the blink of an eye. Since John Toshak's arrival as manager in 1989, the club have had 26 different head coaches in a 30-year period. Only Vicente del Bosque and Jose Mourinho completed three full seasons in a single stint. The definitions of success and failure are redefined. Carlo Ancelotti was sacked only a year after winning Madrid's fabled 10th Champions League title. Some reigns were ludicrously short. Jose Antonio Camacho quit by September of his first season in 2004. His replacement, Mariano Garcia Ramon, lasted three months. While more recently, Rafa Benitez and Yulin Lopetegui were turfed out by the turn of the year during their sole campaigns in charge. Now, of course, this isn't just a hallmark of Real Madrid, as plenty of clubs around the globe have adopted this policy of knee-jerk reactions. Perhaps not all are knee-jerk, but the health bar of managers has been reduced by quite a bit in comparison to what it used to be. And when you're managing a club of the stature of Real Madrid, anything short of a trophy is seemingly viewed as a failure. Aitor Karenka, the former Madrid defender and assistant to Mourinho, explains the phenomenon. He tells The Athletic, This is the demanding nature of Real Madrid. I was part of Jupp Hank's team that won the Champions League in 1998, and then he was sacked. Del Bosque won two Champions League and two La Liga titles and was sacked. This is the nature of the club. You have to give your absolute best because at any moment, things can change. Any sort of failure has seen coaches get tossed aside without much thought. Take Ancelotti, for example, who won a Copa del Rey and La Decima in his first season, and was sacked after finishing second and only reaching the Champions League semi-finals in the following season. But there is a strange flip side to things as well. Zinedine Zidane, despite winning three Champions League titles with the club and delivering their first league title since 2012, among numerous other trophies, He's never really been considered a managerial genius like some of his contemporaries, at least not to the degree of those of the likes of Klopp, Guardiola, or Simeone have been. Granted, Simeone's praise was more prevalent in the past. The most idolized managers of modern football exhibit a high level of control, place huge demands on their players, and often seek three-year projects. Pep Guardiola, Diego Simeone, Antonio Conte, Mauricio Pochettino, and Jurgen Klopp, for example, all demonstrate a level of intensity and process that, the evidence suggests, would not necessarily be compatible with life at Madrid. In the article, Crafton and Fifield go on to explain how perhaps Zidane doesn't get the plaudits that he is due because of the way in which he manages, and I would have to agree in that regard. His style of play isn't as distinct as the managers mentioned above because it seems to be more fluid. That's not to say that he is bereft of any tactical nous, of course. Just look to the halftime footage from Real Madrid's Champions League final victory over Juventus to see that he does have that. But to break things down in an overly simplistic manner, managerial styles are often divided into two categories, the tacticians and the man-management geniuses. Since his retirement, former United players have waxed lyrical about how Sir Alex Ferguson was the master of man management, and that didn't always mean being the best friend of every player. He knew what to say and when to say it. He knew when he needed to give the team a lashing in the dressing room, his famous hair dryer treatment, and he knew when he needed to be silent and let the leaders of the room do the talking or just utter one sentence to ignite the team. Throughout Zidane's tenure at Real Madrid, one of the constants has been the respect that the players all have for their manager, the authority that he has been able to assert, while also being able to keep a room full of players, some playing more than others, happy, or at least relatively happy in most cases. Here's looking at Bale and James Rodriguez. 
In speaking to The Athletic, former Real Madrid president Ramon Calderon said, In Zidane and Del Bosque's case, they knew how to manage that dressing room. Zidane was one of the stars previously. He got the respect of all those players. We see some coaches who want to be the protagonist, like Mourinho and Benitez. Zidane is the opposite. They like to give the protagonism to the players. They are backstage and manage the egos and the mentalities of the stars. It is not easy to keep stars happy. Not all of them can play, which is a problem. You need strategy for matches, but above all, you must be a psychologist. Those two are the best. As one former unnamed coaching assistant has said to The Athletic, the squads that Real Madrid possess typically have enough quality in them to win 80% of matches without ever being told what to do on the pitch. But those 20% of matches are what make or break a manager's career at the club. This creates complications for the managers, as they are faced with the problem of having to create an ethos for the players over the entirety of the season, which can be more rigorous training or a certain style of play, or do you focus on the happiness and man management of the entire squad and take those more difficult matches week by week? This is why it's harder for managers to stick around for a while. For example, after Mourinho had left Real Madrid, the dressing room was completely unsettled. His rigorous style had taken its toll on the squad, and Carlo Ancelotti was brought in to change the atmosphere. With our 2020 hindsight vision, we know that at both Madrid and Bayern Munich, Ancelotti had been criticized for lacking intensity during his training sessions, but his hiring can be seen as a deliberate move by Florentino Perez and the Real Madrid board members, as it brought a much needed change in the squad's culture, dynamic, and morale. What did that lead to? After a 2012-13 season under Mourinho where the behind-the-scenes events were worse than the results on the pitch, Ancelotti's change in the team's routine and morale brought them La Decima, their 10th Champions League title and Copa del Rey title to boot. However, Ancelotti's ethos couldn't last forever at a club like Real Madrid, as the relaxed training sessions and atmosphere around the club could be mistaken for complacency, and another change was made. Now, we don't know who exactly the unnamed assistant is referring to in the article with The Athletic, but the scenario seems to be similar to that of Ancelotti's departure. As the source tells The Athletic, The manager we replaced had been deemed to give too much freedom, on and off the pitch, to the players. The previous manager's idea was to create a context to be happy, be yourself, rely on the quality of the players, and don't ask players to do things they do not like to do. Then we come in and they wanted us to input greater control over the diet, the training regime, the tactics. At Real Madrid, this is where the problems can start. You have to take care with everything you say and how you say it. You are in the hands of the players more than they are in your hands. So Mourinho was brought in to bring in a rigorous structure to the club, as he had done at his previous clubs, while Ancelotti was brought in to counterbalance that and get the dressing room happy again, not to mention to win titles as well, of course. And Benitez, who followed Ancelotti, brought yet another shift in ideas. These managerial changes were basically all counterbalancing each other in order to keep the players on their toes and to bring in results. Zidane's achievements seem all the more impressive now with that in mind. And of course, another dynamic when looking into the Goliath that is Real Madrid is of course, Florentino Perez. Some say that he is really the one pulling all the strings at the club, including the decisions regarding which players get onto the pitch and more. Well, some of the tinfoil hat wearers out there say that his influence reaches as far as UEFA. But that's not to be discussed in this video, as we're looking at how his relationship with the managers influences the club. One thing is for sure, he has gained the reputation in the media and amongst football fans as being the judge, jury, and executioner at Real Madrid. Whether that's true or not, but the reputation comes with good reason. He is, after all, responsible for shaping Real Madrid in the 21st century. As The Athletic writes, he is the man behind the Galacticos splurge at the turn of the millennium, signing Luis Figo, David Beckham, and the Brazilian Ronaldo. While he has signed stars such as Gareth Bale, Cristiano Ronaldo, Eden Hazard, and Luka Modric since his return, some managers have become convinced, privately, that Perez has an iron grip over the local media. He has established himself as the overlord of Real Madrid, and perhaps at a sporting level, the overlord of Madrid itself, in some respects. But as Ancelotti wrote in his own book, he knew that Madrid wasn't a place where you were able to establish yourself for many years. 
Perez said many kind words, but I knew the same Perez had presided over the hiring and firings of nine managers in 12 years over two terms as president. My eyes were wide open from the start, it's the nature of the job, and as was clear from Perez's statements immediately after sacking me, Madrid is not a club where you put down roots. Even by football's crazy standards, Madrid are in a class of their own. So. Why is it that he has so much trust in Zidane, as Perez has always stated that the Frenchman is special to him? Well, it goes back to the Galactico years, as some posit. One source believes his relationship with Zidane has been strong because the pair knew each other as president and player, with several insiders suggesting the Frenchman would often be sounded out by Perez for insight into the Madrid dressing room during his first term in charge. So he was his snitch, basically. <laughs> I'm joking. But it seems as though Zidane has perfected the formula to being a managerial success at Real Madrid. He knows how to navigate the players, as his man management skills and honesty has led to a relationship built on trust and respect, while he had also earned the trust of the president, arguably the most important man at a club with the dynamic of Real Madrid's, from back in his playing days. And speaking of which, his playing days primed him for another facet that trips up many Madrid managers, the expectations of some of the most demanding fans in the world, those who frequent the Bernabeu. And you can have your own expectations exceeded on The Athletic from the writers who are pushing journalism forward in the football world. You'll find coverage of the Serie A, Bundesliga, Premier League, Champions League, MLS, and more. All of it free from advertisements. Plus, The Athletic has an ever-expanding roster of exclusive podcasts hosted by world-renowned journalists, analysts, and experts, the chart-topping Ornstein and Chapman podcast, Zonal Marking, Total Soccer Show, and more look at football at large, while there are plenty of team-specific Premier League podcasts for that thorough team-by-team -team coverage. So if you want to support Rabona TV and get access to some of the best journalism available to you in the football world, then head over to www.theathletic.com slash TV to get a free 7-day trial and 40% off of your annual fee. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one as it was super fun to dive into. I haven't looked at Real Madrid in a while. If you want to help me out in these trying times, then a subscription goes a long way. But other than that, I'm Adrian. I love you and take care of yourself. Ciao.